Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today I'm going to talk to you about our XR and UXP expansion ports. Some people get these two confused. They're two totally different things. They're, they're expansion ports that give you the ability to add more inputs or outputs to your existing device. If you purchase a Pro XR controller, it'll have an XR expansion port. And I'm going to show that to you right now. This happens to be a Zigbee controller, but we have several different types of boards that have this. This right here is your expansion port. It's a little black connector with some brass pins sticking out of it. And you can use this XR expansion port to add more relays. XR stands for expansion relay. So you can only add relays to this port. You can't add A to D inputs. So it's really nice for that. What I have here are we have what we call our XR expansion boards. Like this particular controller right here. If you were to order this controller, what you'll get is you'll get this board and a ribbon cable. And that ribbon cable is made to hook right into the expansion port of your existing Pro XR controller. Now these XR expansion boards are not standalone whatsoever. The reason being, they do not have a microprocessor on them. You have to have a controller that is a Pro XR controller that already has your processor. Now basically the way that this works is whenever you purchase one of our Pro XR controllers like this one, the firmware in this chip is automatically going to assume that it has 32 banks of relays already attached. You can scale that back if you want to. We usually recommend you just leave it at 32. So the way that this works is whenever I say bank, I mean a group of eight relays. The reason why we specify these into eight relay banks is because of these little T-PIC chips here. This little T-PIC chip can drive a group of eight relays. So whenever you specify a bank, you're specifying which T-PIC chip that you're talking to. Now, if I have this relay controller here, I'm just talking to one bank of relays, and that's pretty easy. Now I'm going to add an XR expansion board which has 24 relays, meaning we have an additional three banks of relays. And you can see that by the three TPIC chips that are on this controller. So whenever I attach this, the board has arrows already on the controller, which show you the in and the out, because you can attach this board, which you can attach another board to, which you can attach another board to. I'll get into that more here in a second. But I'm just going to take this little ribbon cable here and I'm going to attach it to my XR expansion port right there. Now in my program I can talk to bank 1 and specify which relays I want on or off or I can specify bank 2, bank 3, or bank 4. That's how you communicate to the relays is by bank. You need to look at our article on our resources page labeled the Pro XR standard for I.O. and relay control. It's going to tell you how to format your commands. You're going to send a 254, which is just an inner command mode command. You're going to send something like a 108. 108 means turn on relay 1. Then you're going to send a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. That's your bank value. So you send three bytes of data. You send your 254, enter command mode, Send your 108, which is your actual command to turn on a relay, turn off a relay. And then you're going to send your bank value from 1 to 32 because that's how many banks this microprocessor is capable of controlling, up to 32 banks or 256 relays. So that's how it works. So now I can communicate here and I can talk to bank 1, which would be this bank, bank 2, bank 3, or bank 4. Now I got all this working and I need another five, four relays. Well, then I get another expansion relay board. This one happens to be a XR40, XR45, which means it has four 5 amp relays and it's an XR board, which means it has the ribbon cable. 
So on the expansion relay board I already have, it has an output XR port. All I got to do is plug that in right there and I've got another bank of relays to control. Now there's only four relays in this bank, which that's fine, that's not going to hurt anything. I could actually add another XR45 board to this and I could talk to these four and those four as a bank as long as you stay within eight. So that pretty well covers the XR expansion port. Now let's talk about the UXP expansion port. The UXP expansion port stands for Universal Expansion Port. What you can use this for is to attach more A to D inputs like, like this little board right here. This is just an expansion uh, A to D converter module and it has an input and an output. So I can add a whole bunch of these, up to 256 channels. This one here has 16, so I can add an additional, what, 16 boards, giving me up to 256 channels. And it comes with a ribbon cable, and I simply attach that to the UXP expansion port. You'll have to make sure that the controller you purchase has a UXP expansion port on it, if you plan on adding things to that port. Not all Pro XR boards have a UXP expansion port on it. In fact, most of the time you have to specify that. So be sure and look out for that. If you're going to be adding more contact closure inputs or A to D inputs, you need to make sure you have a UXP expansion on what I like to call the motherboard, which is the board that actually has your microprocessor attached. And that's kind of a basic overview of how the UXP and XR expansions work. I hope this video has been helpful for you. And be sure to check in on our later videos. And don't forget, read the manuals, read the articles. That's really going to help you along to understand how your controller works. So I'll look forward to seeing you next time. And thanks for stopping by.